welcome to Book World, The Great Escape. I am author C.J. Peterson, and we have, oh, I just pointing the right way. Author Michael Scott Clifton is right beside me. We're going to be talking part two on audiobooks before we get there. Mike, how was your week? Well, it's been one where I've learned to cough a lot. Still uh, went to the doctor, found out I had, uh, what did he call it, upper respiratory infection I did for three weeks. So I understand you've had the, you may be sharing the misery here. But uh, anyway, it's been an That's interesting great. week. Uh, the, uh, our, I'm on the school board at Chapel Hill and our girls and boys, girls won their first round of the playoffs in basketball. The boys were undefeated district champions. And I guess they'll start uh, next week. Awesome. So, Congratulations. Uh, really, really excited about that. And, uh, and we're excited to see a little bit of sunshine. Uh, but, uh, oh, and I'll be speaking to the Lions Club uh, here in Mount Pleasant. Uh, just got asked to do that. And I think that will be March the 16th, uh, Thursday. So um, I understand you have a book event coming up, the uh, Comic-Con, Conroe Comic-Con. It's pretty cool. Comic Conroe. Comic yeah, we Conroe, actually yeah. This morning to the owner, Scott Smith, on Magic Making Mischief, which is also on my YouTube channel, as well as Mom Burello's YouTube channel. I've um, got lots of the, you know, the ins and the outs of what's going to be happening on there. That's pretty exciting. That's March 10th through 12th. Uh, but right now, I'm in the middle of the Sands of Time Trilogy's book blog tour, which today was a phenomenal review, a five-star review written by, oh, help me, what's her um, blog? I can't remember what it's called. It's, it's Lisa Henson's blog. And she wrote just an amazing review. Um, I've sent it through all my social media, so make sure to check it out. And make sure you can also enter. There's not going to be one winner, but two winners. Um, I'll be giving away two full ebook sets of the Sands of Time trilogy. So I'm excited about that to find out who's going to win those. Um, the Sands of Time trilogy is also currently 99 cents. So make sure to grab yours today. Check out all of the other blog tours. You can go blog tour stops. This is today is day nine. Tomorrow's the last day. Um, and you can go to LoneStarLiteraryLife.com and click on blog tours. And mine is currently the second one that's on there. And they have done a tremendous job. I am extremely, could not be more thrilled with what all had happened with the book blog tour and Lone Star Literary Life. Christine is amazing and her bloggers are phenomenal. Exactly. I've done a number with, with her and she, uh, Lone Star Literary Life, if you're a Texas author, they, mm -hmm. uh, they promote Texas authors. That's it's the name Lone Star Literary Life. So you should check them out. They do a fabulous job for Texas authors. Yep, it's not just Texas authors. It's if your Texas, if your story was set in Texas as well. Oh, that's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. I stand or if you lived in Texas for you know an ornament amount of time, and you may have currently moved, but you are a Texan, then you will also count. So there, there's, there's kind of a lot things. of wiggle room. A lot of wiggle room. There. Wiggle room in there. Um, but she's she's amazing to work with. Um, and like I said, her bloggers are phenomenal. They're always on time. Um, I'm one of them. So you know, with Shelf Life Blogs. So I, I'm I'm pretty excited. It was really it's been really neat because letting some people usually either love my books or they hate them. I, I fully understand that. So when I can find one that's you know, a five-star review, it's like, okay, great. Then she totally loved it. Um, and it was called the Plain Spoken Pen Blog. Um, yep. There are yep. other reviews. Yep. There's been Hallways Blog, Storybook Reviews, um, the Lone Star Book Blog Tour Blog. All of the ups and downs did some quotes, as well as It's Not All Gravy. Those blogs did those. Um, review of book ones were done under Stories Under Starlight and Rox Berkey's blog. Uh, book two reviews. Oh, wait. Book one review were story book reviews and stories under starlight. Book twos were Rocks Berkey's blog and Boys Moms Read. And then today and tomorrow are the reviews for book three, which is the Plain Spoken Pen and Liberal Book Adventures. Hmm. So, yeah, it's been it's been a unique experience. I have enjoyed it. Um, kind of seeing the other side, knowing what the other side goes through as a blogger. It's been it's been pretty cool. But yeah, with uh, Magic Making Mischief, we'll be heading to Comic Conroe in the Lone Star Convention Center in Conroe, Texas, March 10th, 11th, and 12th. I will be there all days. I will be working the floor. 
There's some amazing guests. There's going to be Chuck Huber, Peter Columbus, Paul Thomas Taylor, Vic Mignana, and Greg Sipes. And he might be working on a few more. So, and then we'll have him afterwards on the 15th of March, where he'll be giving you a heads up sneak peek into next time's, next year's guest list. So you can get lots of cool stuff on both podcasts. But today we're going to be doing part two of the audio book. So Mr. Mike's going to give us a quick three to five minute review of the last time to catch you up to where we are now, and then we'll take off. So we'll go to sharing screen there. Lisa. With Mike? Yep. We share. <clears throat> Let me see. So when you log into the audio ACX, which is up here in the corner, you log into ACX, um, you have to first claim your book. So I put showing results for CJ Peterson. This part we weren't able to show you last time because he had already claimed it. So I'm going to claim one of my books that I know I'm not going to do an audio book for. And I'll put this as my book. You're claiming winner's verdict, grace your stores, choose how you produce your audio book. I'm looking for someone you have choices. I'm looking for someone to narrate and produce my audio book or I already have audio book files for this book and I want to sell it. So if you've already got a narrator, like for example, Mombi Rello is currently working on appointed time. She's already going to give me the audio files. So that one, I would pick the second one. But because I don't right now, we're going to pick the first one. That's going to take us back to those pages. This is the agreement. You've read the agreement. Sign it. Head in. And this is the stuff that Mike was using for his book last time. So it pulled the, the review. It has the copyright information. You have to put that in there. My book is fiction. Best category. Can you see the category list? Can you see that category list? No, it's not popping up. Okay. There's like a long, huge list. <coughs> this is for this project. And so Mike's going to give us a quick version of what we need to know regarding uh, narrators, because that's a huge, huge portion of this. So again, you need a, you need to pick the narrator that's going to be rep best representative of the characters in your book. Uh, obviously all books have main characters, they have minor characters, you may have more than one main character. <clears throat> and so your choice of narrator is extremely important because you want them to be able to, uh, you know, portray the character the way you have them, um, you know, in your mind, in your, in your book. And so there will be a, you see there's gender, language, accent, voice, age, vocal, it's a lot. It really is. And, and so you need to really go those. Yeah, drop down boxes, and they'll like, give you a, a many, many choices. Uh, and then here on the additional comments, we didn't really go over that. <clears throat> but you, this is where you, you're going to give your potential narrators specific instructions on if you have a marrying character that has a vocal quirk or personality that can be, you know, maybe projected through the way they narrate. This is the place where you want to do that to make it a more easier for them to understand the character that they'll be narrating. Now, the narr one, auditions. One thing that, I'm sorry, one thing that also to point out on this one is this, so you should also provide your marketing plans for the audiobook edition selling right. points. Oh, yeah. Status awards, and reviews, we, et cetera. And we did talk, yeah. We did talk about that a little bit. And the purpose for that is uh, the narrator, and we talked, we'll review that, I guess, a little bit from now but the uh, if you want a really good narrator they're wanting to narrate books that sell the reason they want to narrate books that sell is because they share royalties with you for the most part and they want to make money too just like you do so with a good marketing plan you can entice some of the better narrators that you might not ordinarily, might not ordinarily be able to afford mm -hmm. uh, and any for other example comments on that Yep. For example, with the appointed time, it won first place for young adult fiction last year. So I've already got a narrator, which is Mavi Rella. If I didn't have her, I would add this to it. And I would say, hey, yeah, it won first place in, you know, for young adult fiction in 2022. And, you know, kind of go from there. That's part of the stuff. As far as social media reach, you, the, they want to see numbers. They want to know do you how many people do you have how many followers do you have and of course if you have a lot of good reviews you want to share those as mm -hmm. well 
Now, the audition script, we talked about that a little bit, but uh, here you're going to be submitting a three to five minute narration, a script that you want to uh, do not. We said last week, remember, don't just print off and send the first three or four pages of your first chapter. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to uh, include dialogue from the character and characters, maybe even from your minor characters are going tit for tat back and forth. You want scene mm -hmm. description. And basically you're giving them bits and pieces of what they'll be narrating throughout the, uh, your book. And you want to be able to listen to see how they do on, on these various aspects of your manuscript. And I have found. Is there a good action scene? Is there right. an emotional scene? How do they handle that? I found that some that's and that's right that's that's very important. You're right, CJ, because I found that some, in my experience, you have some narrators who do a fantastic job on um, on dialogue, mm -hmm. and not so good a job on scene description, and, and vice versa. Uh, do a great job on scene description and don't really do a very good job on the characters' narrations. Um, okay, so that's. The, the last thing to kind of review on this, uh, which we talked a little bit, CJ and I, before we started today's uh, podcast, really understand the three different categories of how you produce the, uh, the audio book. You will do it via either royalty share, royalty share plus, or you'll pay a straight fee to your narrator. Now, if you're in case like with CJ and you've already got a narrator, then you're, you know, you don't have to worry about that. You may have already made a, a agreement with somebody or, 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 you know, something along that line. So Mommy uh, said, so if you have multiple characters like CJ's angel, angel books with multiple accents, is there a way to have them run through that? That can be completed. And I mean, just, you would have to make a note. Which is why my right. angel books will probably not be in print because there's not somebody that can do all those accents. <laughs> I mean, won't be in audiobook. If you've got a section that you can put in your three to five minute uh, uh, transcript that you send them, your three minute, three to five minute narration, then uh, obviously include that. But mm -hmm. I think also when you've chosen a narrator, uh, what I found happens is that you give them the first, they they do the first chapter. And then uh, they send it back to you. You have an audio file. You'll have an audio file on your uh, Audible account or ACX account. And you listen to that. And then you provide them feedback on if you think they need to change, particularly with characters and their vocalization of the characters, that you might, that, uh, that you want change. Because, and again, we talked about this before, you know, we started the podcast. The reason for that is you don't want the entire book narrated. And then you discover that they did not do some of the characters, scene descriptions, what have you, in a way that you would like. Now, you will still have the opportunity to go back and individually listen to every single chapter and give feedback and changes you want made to the narrator. But it's so much easier if you clear up any kind of of uh, misconceptions from the jump rather than having to go through every single chapter and have a bunch of changes. The narrators don't like that. And of course you as an author wouldn't like it either. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so going back to the three different choices, royalty share, royalty share plus um, royalty share is the free version. That mm -hmm. means that you don't pay anything And we described very briefly again, royalty share means that you, you know, Audible is going to get 60% of all book sales. You'll get the rather 40% royalty, which will be split evenly between you and your narrator. And I think that runs for seven years. You get 20%, mm -hmm. they get 20%. So, you it does, mm -hmm. yeah, if, unless you've got an alternate deal, like, like for example, you and Mombrella has. So, mm -hmm. uh, and so. I just to make anyway. sure she didn't have a heart attack of thinking she was only going to get seven years. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you've, it's your deal. You can do whatever you want with it. But on royalty share, it doesn't cost you anything to produce an audio book. That's the main mm -hmm. thing. Now, you won't get as good of, you probably won't get as many narrators 
Now, I'm not saying you wouldn't because I've known authors that have done this that got really fantastic narrators. But the odds are that you won't get as high a quality of a narrator, nor will you get as many, uh, 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 you know, uh, auditions, narrator auditions with just royalty share. Most authors I know, and including myself, do the middle version, the middle route, which is royalty share plus. You're still splitting the 40%, 20% for you, 20% for them. Um, but uh, you're also play, paying them an additional flat fee, 100 bucks, mm -hmm. 150 bucks, $200, something like that, on top of the royalty share. You'll kind find that you... At least a little bit, let them know that, hey, yeah. Yeah. And, and it guarantees better and more and, and a greater number of, uh, of, of narrators. Mm -hmm. Now one, th one thing that you will run into, which I have several different times, <clears throat> a lot of these voice actors and narrators, they're members of the Screen Actors Guild. And they will tell you that they have a certain um, uh, fee they have to be met according to guild rules. Well, apparently those are pretty flexible because what I've seen, most authors could not nor would they pay the going rate because what determines uh, if you're paying by the hour, it's called PFH, per finished hour, okay, mm -hmm. per finished hour. If you have an 80,000, if you have a 60,000 word count book, you're probably going to have six to seven hours per finished hours that it requires narration that requires to finish it. If you have 70 to 80, it's going to go from, it's going to go seven, eight, nine per finished hours. Anything over a hundred thousand, you're looking at probably 10 or more per finished hours. And a lot of air narrators will shy away from that unless mm -hmm. you are paying them something other than just royalty share. So keep that in mind. And then but the don't be, uh, the straight fee. Yeah. Yeah, that straight fee. And and to be honest, I don't know exactly what a straight fee would be in terms of uh, what the normal charge is. Now, if you're, I've if they're heard, saying. I've heard average between two and 300 per finished hour. Well, I've heard a thousand or more, particularly if they're screen actor, voice act, you know, guild, and they charge two, you know, 175 to hundred dollars per finished hour, which if you had an eight hour, uh, uh, narration that's $800, mm -hmm. you know, so you got to just got to keep that kind of keep that in mind. I so, know uh, that my sister for her, um, shadow of dragons, the nightmare King, she ended up, I think doing 1500. Um, hers was a Broadway actress that did it and she did an amazing job, but it can be done. Um, it could end up being pretty high if you, don't choose one of the other two. Well, you're, you're, you're hoping for multiple narrators to audition for your books. It is a little bit time consuming because if you get 15, 20, 30 different narrators that are, uh, you know, auditioning your three to five minute narration, then um, it does take a little while to go through all of those. But it's better to have that many than not enough. So uh, the last thing uh, that you would do once you're finished with the narration and you've, you've gone through each chapter, you've listened to the audio files and you've made any changes that you want made and it's ready for production. You know, then you send it on to ACX and generally the process takes anywhere from a month to two months for them to go through their uh, their sound and uh, quality checks. So, uh, and, and a good thing about a lot of the uh, narrators now is that they have their own sound engineers. So I have not yet had a book that's uh, been produced through auto through ACX that was turned down because of the, the audio quality wasn't up to their standard. So most of the narrators are going to have their own sound engineer that's going to you know, uh, process that. So when it goes to ACX, you won't, you won't have any issues of them bouncing it back to you. So, ah, oh, well, this isn't, you know, you've got to fix this. So, uh, and then the platforms that you will find your audiobook on when you go through ACX is it'll be audible, Amazon, 
and iBooks. So you have those three platforms. It won't be on draft to digital or did uh, Ingram Spark buy them. You know, it's not going to be on those platforms unless you, I think there's probably a process to do that, but it's not going to be loaded on that platform by uh, ACX. So just remember the Amazon, Audible, and iBooks. Okay. Um, I finished that page just to kind of bruise this through. And when I hit continue, this is what came up. What is this? <clears throat> it's the chapter. Okay. Chap chapter names. Okay. That <laughs> I'm said good. Yeah. I was a little confused when I first started doing that. It's uh, most books, I think no longer, although there's still a lot that do most books don't have chapter titles. It's just chapter one. I know there's there's some, but a lot if chapter one, two, two, three, four, five, six. Or in like CJ's case, if you have a chapter title, then when mm -hmm. you submit your book for narration, you want the chapters listed. So uh when you get Did you the, lock up? No, uh, no, not so far. He locked up. There you are. Okay. So there. So there's the, the one of the, the original menu you showed, CJ, when you chose your book, will have uh, something on there about that. And you're just putting your chapters, you know, click, paste and click your chapters. Chapters. Yes, literally you know, right here. Chapters one through 50. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, or chapter one title, chapter two title, chapter three title, uh, et cetera. Now, the how many words are in your book? That's what they base the per finished hours on. And basically, roughly 10, every 10,000 words, you can pretty much count on one hour of yep. narration. So the typical audiobook yep. narrator with 93,000 yep. words per finished hour of yep. audio. What territory rights do you own? In other words, do you own the full rights to your... You do. That's the mm -hmm. good thing about about going through ACX because you own the full right of your books. How do you like to distribute your audio books? You can do it exclusively through Amazon audio iTunes, which is the 40% royalty that you get or not exclusive. And you only get 25% royalty. And so I stand corrected when I said that the, uh, it was loaded on just Amazon audible and uh, iTunes, because mm -hmm. here, if you're willing to only get a 25% royalty, you can go to non-exclusive distribution, uh, and that means you can load it on any kind of digital platform or audio platform you want, but notice you're only getting 25% and you're splitting that 25% with the narrator. Correct. So, and the narrators would only, you'd only get each about 12 and a half percent. Yep. So, and then we're with the, how do you pay for your audiobook producer? We're talking about the royalty share and the pay for mm -hmm. production options. So yep. we would do to share because that will let me right. to bounce to the next page. Right. Um, so this is the review and post. We are not posting, <laughs> but this is no. the last page. Um, basically, is this all the information you've got? This is how your title will appear producers. You actually put your title here and then you would post right. it next. And once, um, once, and that's where it'll be about 30 days to 60 days before uh, you hear back from them and saying, hey, your book is is now ready for sale. It is now posted on Audible. Mm -hmm. So it's um, kind of it's kind of a challenge. It's kind of a scary and challenging, particularly for someone like me. Probably wouldn't be for you, CJ, but it was for me uh, because it seems like there's so many moving parts, you know, and and if I so this let me say this. If I can do it, 99% of the population can do it as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. It's just, you got to follow the steps. There's just a lot of steps to it. Um, right. So you had me pull this up. Um, I know that ACX also, some people are concerned with how do you know what the audio requirements are? Honestly, you Google them. They'll tell you. This is just basically a pictorial and, and condensed version of what you originally showed, CJ, when you're going through on what's required for your book. 
And it's basically just repeating that in maybe an easier form or fashion. So I would actually go here first if you're look, thinking about producing an audiobook using ACX. Oh, where is here? What is this? This is, uh, if I can get, okay. So this is the. Uh, what see. is it on the internet? What's the... That's what I'm looking it's under uh, how it works. Okay, over here on the left-hand side <clears throat> where you see how it works for authors. So mm -hmm. you would click on authors and it takes you here. And, and then it gives you kind of a down and dirty of uh, each step. I posted it in the comments so that everybody has that. Okay. So uh, let's, again, it's under how it works, authors. For, how does it work for an author if you're wanting to produce an audiobook? So uh, you just go over here. And audiobooks are, from what I've read, uh, they are still uh, growing in market share and popularity because so many people uh, have long commutes to work or they just like to listen to books. Uh, and so if you do not have any books currently on, in production for audiobooks, I would seriously consider it. But here you can get it done either at a reasonable price or even for free. And that's the main thing. Because in the past five years ago or so, you'd be spending thousands either on buying your own sound equipment uh, or getting somebody to produce it for you. And as Mombi points out, for the narrator, if you use Audacity recording tool, it actually has an ACX check that you can use, which is a good hmm. tip. Thanks, Mommy. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. But I put the link in the comments on how to find this page that's currently up. And that's just acx.com backslash help, how it works. And you can choose which part you want to read under, get a little more details. Sure. Audiobooks can be difficult. They can be confusing. Um, if you had one gold nugget to share regarding audiobooks, Mike, what would it be? We have about three minutes left. Main thing would be the most critical thing you're going to do is the narrator, choosing the right narrator for your book. Mm -hmm. Narrators will make or break your book. True. Um, so next week, we are going to be fine next week. <laughs> next week, we're going to, ooh, whew gonna be a fun one we're gonna have um one of our former actually both of our former guests kelly lynn colby and danielle mc mcdonough mcdonough she's gonna yep. not be here for that yep. but danielle mcdonough and we're gonna be talking comic cons and how that relates to the author world awesome um, so we're gonna have kind of a little bit of a forum type thing we're gonna have two guests that's danielle mcdonough sorry danielle and kelly lynn colby so it should be fun uh, both girls, great personalities, and we've run across both of them multiple times at many different Comic Cons. Mike and I both do Comic Cons as well. And we'll let you know the kind of the ins and outs of how that could help you as an author or help you as a reader to find your favorite author and where to look. So, in the meantime, um, find your narrator, authors, get your book out there. Like I said, I have Mombi. Sorry, she's already taken. And she's currently <laughs> working on a point in time, Saints of Time trilogy, which is currently on books, book blog tour for Lone Star Literary Life. Tomorrow is the last day. Make sure to go in and get your giveaway. You just have to sign up for it on any of those blogs. Go for it. And we will be doing the drawing for that later on. I think either this week. I think this week is how that works. And we'll get those out to you guys. In the meantime, Check the stuff out. We had Jeffrey Lee last week. We'll have Donna Mc or Danielle McDonough. I am so sorry, Danielle. We'll have Danielle McDonough and Kelly Lynn Colby next week talking Comic Con. In the meantime, have a good week.